Welcome everybody. My name is Pastor Dave Carter. I'm with New Life and Sterling. And today's message is entitled, The Weak Are Made Strong. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. And it says, Therefore I take no pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And then one more passage of scripture in Isaiah 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. I wish I had time today to read the whole chapter of Judges 13 in the Old Testament. It talks about the birth of Samson. Sam Samson was a miracle baby, for we know that the angel appeared unto his mother and told her that she would bear a child and that she was not to allow her child to drink strong drink that he would be a Nazarite from birth and he had certain vows that he would need to keep. And, and then she told her husband, Manoah, and Manoah prayed that God would send the angel for they knew exactly what they needed to do with this child. What I found in the book of Judges, Israel has this re recurring theme. They did evil again in the sight of the Lord. These words are constantly occurring chapter after chapter, and their focus was so often on themselves and not on the Lord. And when God has, uh, there are times that God has to wake us up, sometimes he sends uh, 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 problems our way, or he allows them to come our way, I should say, and that in order to wake us up or shake us up, and this was uh, constantly happened to the children of Israel. What happened here is now that the uh, uh, the Philistines are now have come to Israel and they begin to intermingle with the people and eventually they took over Israel. And God was allowing that to happen in order to wake Israel up from their sins. So often we fall prey to our sins and we need to be woken up or shaken up that we will turn our heart back to the Lord. Now in the book of Judges, Judges, it teaches us that we need the power of God to face our greatest battles with the world today. Think for a moment of your daily struggles, which drain you emotionally and spiritually. Some daily struggles draw us into temptation, resulting in stress and strains our relationship with the Lord. We so often are left weak, discouraged, and we feel hopeless. That hopelessness so often will tell us that we are so weak. And we fall prey to failure, and we forget about God's greatness. In the book of Judges, we're going to see Samson's failures and learn that those problems are not terminal. We find Paul would say out of weakness, he, can, he, he said out of weakness he became strong because it's a spring, springboard excuse me, to the greatness of our God. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. See, as we look at the life of Samson, it'll teach us how to live an overcoming life. Samson's life will also teach us to be strong in the midst of weakness and pressure. The life of Samson will teach us how to tap on God's power when we are even less perfect. We must remember the same spirit that lifted Samson can lift us out of our limitations. I found as I studied the life of Samson, I, I see that it was filled with many catastrophes. Samson's failures are, are among some of the, the greatest we find in Scripture. 
or he commits adultery, he betrays, he's blinded, and he ends up being a slave. But one thing I realized today as I study Samson, I found that failure, that no one is exempt from failure. And so Samson is like many of us that have failed God, that have walked away from the Lord who realize today that we need to draw closer to him and ask his forgiveness. See, I believe that in Judges 13 and, and 14 and, and 15, that as you study the life of Samson, you will find that he was very much like us today, and he made many mistakes. Judges 13, 1 tells us that again, Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Because I see this quite often, that Israel did sin in the eyes of the Lord, it was a recurrent pattern that they needed to overcome. And why did Israel keep falling back into this pattern of sinning again and again? I believe that they lost their vision for their nation. Secondly, I believe that they lost their direction for their personal lives. Sounds like some of the things that has happened in our own time today. So the book of Judges will teach us many things. Constantly, Israel kept falling prey to that they did sin in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord sent in that day many judges that came and ruled over Israel. And they would help them, some of them, others would cause them to fall back into sin. And constantly, this reoccurring or in pattern of falling away from the Lord was constant. Now we come to Judges 13, and now the Lord has turned Israel over to the Philistines. God had a Savior to come and help Israel to set them free from this oppression of the Philistines, and his name was Samson. We will recall, many people recall of the uh, story of Gideon. It's also found here in the, the book of Judges, chapter 8, about Gideon, and everybody remembers his fleece, asking God to wet in the fleece and also to make it dry in order to know that he was following God's plan and God's will. And we see that Gideon was a great warrior where God uh, asked him to, to reduce his warriors. He had thousands of warriors to reduce them to 300. And how he did that, he first told those that were afraid to go home, those that didn't want to fight to leave. And finally the Lord said, take them all down to the river and let them drink. And the ones that use their hand like a cup to drink out, keep those as your soldiers. And that's how he ends up with 300 to defeat the armies. Well, God had another plan here. In chapter 13, he was going to use Samson to defeat the Philistines and that he would eventually become the judge or the ruler over Israel. But I did notice as I studied this that Israel was on a cycle of destruction. They would start off by serving God. They would be blessed by God because of their faithfulness. Then after a few years, they would become callous towards the presence of God. And they would take God's presence for granted. They would like, we used to say, you go through the motions. They look like they were spiritual people. They look like they were taking God seriously. But it was not true to their heart. The results of them going through this cycle, they lost focus on God and upon his power and his strength. I'm sure this was not Israel's intention, nor is it our intention. When we don't focus on God like we should, we don't put him first, we put him last on the list, and when we do that, we lose our focus, we lose our spiritual power, and we end up like the world. 
we fall in prey to the things of the world. What happened to Israel was they would reach the bottom, a destructive bottom. And then they would begin to cry out to the Lord God Almighty. And God would set them free after he heard the cry of their heart. And as a result, Israel would be brought forth to respect again. This cycle was a reoccurring cycle again and again, and you'll find it throughout the book of Judges. People always seem to turn to God when they are hurting. But then when the Lord helps their life to improve, many times they lose their focus. They lose their victory because they fall prey to the world once again. And many times our life can become just like Israel's life, a recurrent cycle of destruction. And so the Philistines, let me mention a few things about them. You may not know that they lived near Athens, in the, near the Aegean Sea. We don't know how they ended up in Palestine, but they did. Now, the Philistines were early, dis one of some of their early discoveries was iron. They were able to make iron spears and shields and chariots. It was the Philistines who were able to conquer Israel from within. As I mentioned to you earlier, they, ingle, they ingle ming mingled with the people, began to learn their culture, and then they were able to take them from within. So God had to send a warrior, a soldier. He had to send someone to help them to get free from that bondage again. Samson wanted the people of Israel to be free. He wanted them to turn back to God because God had laid his hand upon him from birth. We know that he was, he was designated to be set apart to do the work of God. The reason important that we understand this is that God said to his mother, he's not to drink any strong drink. He says to his mother that a razor shall not touch his head. And we must understand, even though a person starts out right, if they don't keep their eyes on Jesus, the Arthur and finisher of our faith, they'll end up making a lot of mistakes, and many times their life ends up in ruins. See, say, Samson, excuse me, greatest battles were not face to face with the enemy or the armies or people, but they were battles that came from within, and that's where our battles come from within our own life. Satan. Excuse me, Samson had the same battles that we face today. He got so involved in the world that the world took control of him. Let not the world absorb you. Let not the world take from you your strength, your character. Let not the world take anything from you today. For I believe that God is stirring things up in your heart today because he wants to use you because he purposed that in your life from the beginning. The question I ask today is how did Samson win against the Philistines? How did he win? I believe as you read and study his life, he dared to be different. Sometimes we need to dare to be different. We cannot let the world squeeze us into its mold. And still be free. See, whenever you want to live for Jesus, Satan is going to come after you. He will not necessarily come through your front door, but many times he comes from the back door dressed just like you are. That way you don't notice who is coming at you. You doesn't notice that he's pulling you away from God. You doesn't notice that he wants you to sin and fall short of the glory of God. We live in a time that so many people are falling prey to the things of the world. 
2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. See, we're to supper, be separated from the world. Not isolated, but separated. And that's what he had done to Samson. By giving these rites that he's not to drink or a razor touch his head, and he was not to touch any dead body, that those rites would keep him separated from that known world at that time. And God is saying to us today as Christians and believers, be separate from the world. Don't indulge yourself like them and fall prey to Satan's temptations and fall prey to sinning. Otherwise, our life will become like a cycle that Israel's had become. So often, the world is offering us to self-indulge, but it will bring doom and separation from God. That's why the Bible says to stay alert because your adversary, Satan, walketh about like a lion seeking whom he may devour. We need God's power today and strength more than ever to overcome all of these things that we encounter. We all need more of Jesus. Otherwise, the culture that we are living in will pull us down. There is a pull upon man downward, but I'm so glad Jesus came and set us free, and now I can look up for my redemption is drawn nigh. Yes, say, Samson is a good example that he did not cave in to the world initially. He did not cave in to the ploits of the enemy, but stood firm for the Lord Jesus Christ. From his very birth, as I said, he was separated. He was set apart to do God's work. And God is wanting to separate you today. He don't want you to go down and defeat. He wants his spirit to come alive in you once again. So that's why the Bible says, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Satan's problems came when he failed to be different. And when Sa Samson gave up, that separation, he lost God's strength, he lost God's anointing, and he lost God's power. We don't want to do that today. We don't want to go down in defeat. We are victorious. Jesus paid the price of victory. Today, I stand affirm that you as well can have victory. The reason we are to live and act differently because God had a purpose for all of our lives. God had a plan for Samson's life. Think about the miracle babies that were born who God set apart. Samson is one. Samuel is one. We know John the Baptist was set apart to begin and helping the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. Don't compare yourself to others, but allow yourself to be set apart and different today to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. And he wants to unfold it and lead you and guide you and give you direction for your life. Yes, when Samson was born, yes, he would not ever live to take strong drink. He would not allow a razor touch his head. He would not touch a dead body. And the stories that we find are very interesting as you read about his life. He goes and tells his parents that he, he needs to get married. He needs a lady. And he sees one and he says, that's the lady I want. And so he comes and in those days and times, the celebration of a wedding would be about seven days. It would not be just a few hours of a day, but it would be seven days. The custom of that day is that you would bring a lot of friends for the groom to be. And they gave him 30 friends. And they would be laughing and talking and they would talk about different riddles. And from one of uh, Samson's experience, he's going to give them a riddle. And he says, out of the eaters, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. And it came in his 
destruction of a lion. He destroyed a lion and laid it along the roadway. And sometime later he came back and inside the lion was honey. The lion is strong and the honey is sweet. They could not answer the riddle. He told them that if, if they could not answer it, they would have to give him 30, uh, 30 pieces of clothing. He told them that if they could not solve the riddle, they owed these things to him. And thinking they could not solve it, and they tried, they asked, could it be this, could it be that, and they could not answer the riddle. They went to his wife-to-be and said to her, find out the answer for us, for if you don't, we will destroy you and your family. Eventually, she persuaded Samson to tell her that the lion, it was the lion who was strong and out of his insides was the sweet honey. And when he heard that they had the answer, he knew where it come from. And he became angry and upset, but he just, he, he went out and beat up 30 people that he could get their clothing from them, that he would be able to give it to them. Yeah, this is how Samson began the downturn of his life. He wanted to be accepted. He wanted to be a part, just like the world says, come and let's have Mary together. Let's, let's come together and let's live together with fun and excitement. They don't even think about placing God first in their life. That's what the world invites you to do. And that's why you have to say no to the, the lustful desires that the world will try to infuse in your life today. you got to stand firm for the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan is just looking for a toad hold to pull you away from God today. We see that Samson's life was full of catastrophe and destruction. He was always trying to get vengeance on them. So he took, on one occasion, he tied together 30 foxes' tails together and lit them on fire and let them go out and burn up all their crops. This is the kind of, uh, of, of activity, uh, of corruption that entered into his life. For Satan was trying to even destroy Samson, that he could not do the work that God called him to do. The Bible does tell us that he did judge Israel for 20 years. And why he judged Israel, they were at peace. I believe today that some of us are not at peace today. Why? Because we're trying to serve two masters. Some of you may want to be holding on to God, but also you're trying to reach out and hold on to the world. And the Bible says that we cannot serve the world and God. That's why we're to come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And if you are trying to ride the fence, we used to call it straddling the fence. If you're trying to do that today, you'll eventually fall prey to the world and not God. God is beginning to speak to you right now as I'm bringing you this message. He's speaking to your life. One of the things I noticed about Samson, he was a man of passion, a man of emotion. And sometimes, uh, so often, Christians don't think that it's important to be passionate about God. We don't think it's uh, important to be emotional. And some say, oh, I can't get emotional about God. If you're emotional about the things of the world, why not be emotional for the Lord and be passionate about him? Because he is our victory. He is the answer to the world's problems. For we know that and it never will stop being the answer he will always be the answer to the world's problems so often we want to live in the world but we also want to hide out in the world and nobody knows that you're a christian or believer because you are acting just like them you're listening to the the dirty jokes just like they are you listen to all the the junk of the world and, and you you're thinking well it, it can't be all that wrong I'm here to tell you it can be. We got to be separate as he, as God separated Samuel initially, separated him. 
and cause him to want to serve the Lord and cause him to want to desire to live for him. See, it's important today that, that we call on the name of the Lord and do not hold back the emotions and the passion to live for him. See, the reason why we need passion, because it gives us a sense of fulfillment. It gives us a sense of joy. God is longing to lift you to a higher place, to a higher plane in him. Real freedom comes from allowing God to see your emotion and your passion for his plan. Jesus said, Love not the Jesus said, Love your Lord thy God with all your heart. That means emotion. That means being. And with all of your soul and with all of your mind. Our passion should be open unto the Lord's empowerment. I need God's power and passion today more than ever before. It says in Revelation 3.15, he says there, you are not hot, you are not cold. I wish you were either one or the other. Because you are lukewarm, that means unmoved, I will spit you out of my mouth. Are you, some of you today lukewarm towards the things of God? You know, have you ever tried to sit down and eat dry oatmeal? Oh, you can't do it. It's horrible. It's horrible. You, you, you dump it right in the trash. Sometimes that's the way we are to God. We are not passionate about the Lord. We don't have the fulfillment and desire to do what he wants us to do because the world has got a hold of us. It's pulling us away from the things of God right now. And the Lord is speaking to your heart and says to you, Come out from among those things of the world and be ye separate and be cleansed today and be set free. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Quickly as I close here this message, five principles to help you understand our emotion. God is an emotional God. Why? Because they are creative in us. And we are created in God's image and likeness. Emotions, number two, are universal. Some say women are more emotional. Some say some men are more emotional. Some say they're less in touch with their emotions. Others are real emotional and passion. Everybody has emotions. And it's so often that we give them to the Lord today that he can use those emotions to reach people for him. Number three, emotions can motivate our empowerment in God. Yes, it caused Samson to destroy the lion. He took one time a jawbone of a donkey and, and killed a thousand Philistines. Yes, emotions erupted up in him when he became anger and the way they treated the people of God. But I will say today, number four, we must manage those emotions. We cannot allow our emotions to run this way and that way. Proverbs 25, 28 tells us, who has no control over his emotions is like a city with no walls. God can help us control them. And when we need to be passionate, we need to be passionate. You know, there are times we need to be angry with the devil. Anger is not a sin if you focus it in the right direction. Get angry with Satan. Tell Satan, you're not going to take my family. My family belongs to the Lord right now. And tell him that the Lord Jesus Christ is whom you're going to serve. Be like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, today I'm giving my emotions to the Lord. I want to be passionate for the Lord. I want to be used for the Lord's glory and honor. And today, as I close this message, we begin in the title, I mentioned to you that the weak can be made strong. If you're weak spiritually today, I'm going to pray for you. If you're not strong for the Lord, I'm praying the Lord will add new strength. As we pray, Lord Jesus, speak to the hearts of your people today. Lord, those that are weak spiritually, help them to become strong once again for you. Wash them and cleanse them from all their sin. 
And Lord, today I'm asking they'll become strong and powerful. Give them that passion and emotion to live for you every day. And God, I praise you and I give thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you today.